Popscene.com. Thanks for joining me for another video being review. This time you're looking at a bottle of Oladu 30. This is the 30th uh, anniversary beer um, produced by the Haverstoon Brewery in Scotland. As it says on there, limited edition, special reserve, Haverstoon 30th anniversary. So very special. Big thanks to you and up at Haverstoon for sending a couple of bottles of this for me to take a look at. You can hear it rattling inside. It's beautifully presented, as always, with all do, but this is an extra special version. So um, it's the 30th anniversary, and also the 30 um, indicates the use of the, I think it's the uh, Highland Parks award winning uh, 30, 30 year single malt Scotch whiskey. That's the barrels that they use. The barrels in question are actually first fill sherry butt. So, not only has it had whiskey in it, it's also originally had a uh, first fill of sherry, so I mean, it's, so they were still probably kind of like quite wet barrels when they were first used to be used um, to um, mature Highland Park whiskey. In. I've had a number of versions of um, Oladu. This is a brand new um, release. They haven't brewed it since 2009, it is now September 2013. So, yes, yeah, very excited to try this. Um, so essentially, if you if you've never seen or heard of this beer before, uh, Oladu is, uh, which I think means black oil, beautifully presented in a um, box, just like you get a, a lovely single malt. Um, yeah, so it means black uh, black oil, and it is um, a version of their Oladu, not Oladu, of uh, old engine oil, which is their porter. Which usually comes in around six, around six percent. This is eight percent. So I'm just taking off that bit of foil. Yeah, there you go. That's what's making all the racket. This little little tag with the, um, the all the kind of like branding on. That's very nice, very nice indeed. So yeah, so um, that is their kind of their porter. Usually at six percent. So I think they're brewing a slightly stronger version of it, which is then put in these specific barrels. Yeah, only twenty thousand bottles of this were made. 80% of them are being made for export, so only 20% of those are going to be available in the UK. So get online, uh, Harvey Stoon. Um, I'll, I'll check the URL in a second. Now. I'm always doing this. I will make sure I get the right bloody URL after all that spiel. It's on the back of the ball. It's yeah, harveystoon.com. I thought it was that. I thought it might be harveystoonbrew.com. Anyway, less of the waffle. Beer in the glass. Absolutely black as night. I mean, there is no sh um, kind of like hint of brown or anything, anything like that. It's got a lovely kind of, it's got a lovely kind of sheen to it as well. It's it's like it is like a lump of coal. It's got that kind of like, so I mean, coal. It's kind of kind of matte, but it's also shiny. Pretty much still as you'd expect for a beer that's been uh, aged in uh, whiskey barrels. You can see some legs on. I mean, which are. Been left on that. I mean, it's not. It's only eight percent. So I mean, maybe that's a bit of kind of residual sugars or something like that on there. Anyway, let's check out the aroma. This is where it all begins, really. Oh wow. Oh wow. Every time I get a different <laughs> version of Oladu, it's a whole different experience. I'm no by no stretch of the imagination somebody who knows much about whiskey at all. I don't particularly like drinking whiskey as it is, but when they're putting really nice dark beers, I am a fan. Yeah, you are getting cherry, and it, it, for me, it comes in the form of like more of like a like a really dark cherry chocolate. It's got a, a real acrid kind of carbon note. Definitely smoky, very peaty. Sniffing back of my hand, I pick this up off Terry K. And it really works. Sniff back of your hand, go back in, it refreshes you know, your nostrils. Yeah, really dark chocolate. Maybe a hint of marzipan. It's got, yeah, kind of carbon, tar. But yeah, definitely look quite peaty. And that, that, that peat and that wood, it's like a chard. Day after a bonfire, maybe it's, it's a slightly dewy morning, and you you go back to that bonfire, and it's still kind of like charcoaly and charred, but it's slightly wet. That smells lovely. It's got a mild kind of colour, colour note to it. Oh, 
that's, that's incredible. Not too boozy at all, I mean, 8%, it's, it's a tricky thing, it's a bit of 8% that is, has got a lot of um, spirit character in it. To keep that in check, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an art. Wow, I could sniff this all day. I mean, it's not pouncing out and punching in the face, but it's definitely got a lot going on. But it's not, you know, I mean, it's not brash. It's, it's, it's very kind of like grown up and measured and sophisticated. Anyway, I could waffle on about the aroma all day. Let's, let's dig in, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Mm. Oh. Once again, I mean, the last one I had was the um, 1991. Massively different to that as well. You can definitely can taste something which is a lot more akin to the regular old engine oil, I'd say. Starts off um, quite cola like in a way, but without that sweetness. It's got this kind of charred note to it. It's got a woody, kind of earthy, beefy note. Yeah, definitely peat there. It's not going phenolic, it's not becoming kind of um, like TCP, it's not overstepping that mark. It's got a lovely. Kind of expressive note of peat in the middle, which kind of it rises to it like a like uh, like uh, like a mountain, and then it kind of then drops off again. It tails off quite gently. Yeah, it's definitely got a lot of the, the kind of oaky spirit character. Dark chocolate covered marzipan. Cameron Thornton's, check it out, it's really nice. <laughs> Drinkable as well, it really is. There is a something that makes me think of hops, makes me think of kind of British hops, with an earthy note and a slightly. It's got a something what. Is e edging towards kind of preserved lemons, but without a tartness. It's got the flavour, but not the tartness and sharpness. Maybe it's those kind of like dark malts. I don't know what kind of malts are using this. Yeah, there's kind of there's a there is a flatness to it and a flatness to the flavour. But once again, I'm kind of it's like a it's like a coal face, hard, flat, black. Full of kind of cracks of flavour and kind of runs of kind of yeah that that bitterness at the back end which I, which I thought was a bit like yeah as I say I'm gonna say preserved lemons I'm gonna say that definitely kind of a really harsh roast coffee very bitter kind of hundred percent kind of um, cacao where it's kind of it's where it's like a sharp dry bitterness of the chocolate with that kind of waxy note to it it's a bitter chocolate really really bitter. Not overpowering with the spirit, but I think it gives, brings it a, a very unique personality to this beer. Yeah, to start with, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite subtle, and flavours kind of ebb and flow and kind of like jump out, and then it grows to this kind of peak of multi bitterness, kind of, uh, a, a kind of a slight kind of. Cutting kind of prickly bitterness, then on the aftertaste, drops away, molasses, as I said, that kind of real heavy, 100% cacao, waxy, sharp, bitter chocolate, and then the kind of the, the lasting effects of the, that kind of wood, burnt wood, and the spirit character that continues and kind of circulates continuously like as you sit and just kind of like waffle or think or pontificate like <laughs> I clearly am so that's really it's really interesting that and so dramatically different to all the other versions I think the, yeah, by taking that base beer and 
um, using different kind of barrels from the same distillery. You think, well, what's, what's the difference going to be? What's the difference going to be? And and the answer is a lot. <laughs> I'd love to try a load of um, these um, different Highland Park whiskies. I should have gone when I were up in Aberdeen. The, we went to this um, this bar called The Grill, which was a ridiculous amount of whiskies. I should have got a little bit because I'm never going to buy a bottle of whiskey because it'd be a waste of time. But I'd love to know. I'd love to have it like at the side and go, mm, ooh, oh yeah, I can pick out those things. I've seen Terry do that on his reviews. Anyway, I'm I'm just waffling now. Talking to Terry, this could go on for 25 minutes if I'm not careful. So let's wrap it up. It's a lovely beer and it just shows the complexity that a barrel can um, give to a beer. Uh, and I mean, because that base beer doesn't change, but the barrel changes and it brings its own unique personalities to it. It's just, it's, it's real mastery if you ask me. And, and Harvest Dune have been producing this beer, these beers, Ola do, for such a long time. And I think that it's overlooked because Barrel aging is so popular nowadays, and a lot of people see it as a new thing in it, and they've been kicking ass for many years and brewing bottles of Oladu. And this is Harvest Dew. So, happy birthday, Harvest Dew. 30 years old. Bloody hell, nearly as old as me. <laughs> it's their 30th anniversary beer. Oladu, 8% ABV, aged in Highland Park with Highland Park 30 year old whiskey barrels that were originally first fill sherry butts. So, loads of bar barrel character, not too heavy, just perfectly put together. I'm Rob from Hopsing.com. I'm gonna, gonna go upstairs and enjoy every last drop of this. I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>